<laughs> Put your hands up and get a drink. Yeah. Yeah, you got to stay drunk for the rest of these days now, you know. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength and in his presence is fullness of joy. Would you turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3? 2 Timothy chapter 3. You know, we want to stay updated. And the Spirit told us that he would keep us updated in things to come. Because the Spirit of truth tells us things to come. And the spirit of error misleads us. And in this time, that's why it's so important about staying filled with God's presence. Because only in his presence and staying filled with his presence can the yokes constantly be broke. You know, every day is a new day. And what you sowed yesterday is waiting for you today. <laughs> and in this, one of the things that we've got to be closer to God than we've ever been. And then in this area in time, the enemy is, the Bible tells us that he's a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. And he's trying to turn people. He's trying to deceive people. And he's trying to bind people. Of course, he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy in every area. And that's because it's perilous times. And there'll be perilous times from now until we go home. And I'm talking about perilous times where things are going to go up and down. Things will get worse. Then they'll seem like they're getting better. Then they'll get worse. They'll seem like they're getting better. Do not be led by what the world tells you. Because the world will try to cause you to relax. And I'm not talking about relax. And I'm talking about get lazy and compromise. And we can't do that. You know, all of a sudden, uh, gas prices went down. People are thinking, oh, great. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't go out and get yourself in debt and all kinds of other stuff. Be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Because the world is trying to deceive us in a great and mighty way to snare us in the traps of the enemy. Because the rule of this world is Satan, isn't he? So why don't you understand that there are perilous times and we're in them and they will be here until the day we leave. That's why we must be sensitive to the presence of God and have clarity to his voice so that we are able to discern. And when the Lord gave me this today, it was kind of like, man, this is really uh, strong in the area of where we're at right now. But I believe that we really need to see and understand where we're at. And, and not only that, where we're at, but what's coming and what season we're really in. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1, would you read it with me? But know this, that in the what? Last days, perilous times will come. Are we in perilous times? That means that they'll be harsh, savage, difficult, dangerous, painful, fierce, grievous, hard to deal with times. You know, there are certain things that we have to put up with. And that sometimes is difficult, isn't it? You know, when we see things that are going on in this country, it's difficult because we have to put up with it. You know, and, and it's almost like you, you, you're expecting some kind of disaster to come just because of the way things are reacting right now, where, where people are being placed and what's going on in this country and all kinds of other things that are going on globally. You know, there was a huge earthquake today. In California. Well, you know, you look at the West and there's fire. Thousands and hundreds of thousands of forests are burning up. You look at the middle of this country and it's flooded like crazy. You know? And, and you look at towards the East. Well, hallelujah, there's Cuba right over there loaded up with missiles. You know? I, you know, I mean, you can get in a boat and go over there. But I believe also that the East is favored. And the Lord said you can reach the world through Florida. But look at what's going on right now. I mean, it is really intense. There are perilous times. Not only that, you're seeing more wicked. You're seeing, you're seeing um, uh, government begin to slack off in its 
area of how it was to upstand certain things and protect people. And now it's slacked off. Where they're allowing the states to do whatever they want now. You know, when things first originated, of course, we all know that thing, it was a Bible country. It was a biblical country. And now everything has been changed with prayer out of school and so forth. You know, I mean, you can bring Ouija boards in there and do witchcraft and give out condoms and everything else in schools. But you can't talk about Jesus. You know, so in, in this, there's perilous times to where, you know, it's almost like we have to put up with it. Without getting thrown in jail. You know? <laughs> and in this, the only thing that we can do is spiritually fight. You know, we have a tendency to want to do things physically, but we must spiritually fight. And he says, and there'll be perilous times will come in the last days. How many of y'all will know in the last days, right? For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of religiosity or godliness, but denying its power from such people turn away. For this sort are those who creep into ministries, households, schools, and make captives of gullible people, loaded down with sins led away by various lusts, they're always learning. They're getting knowledge, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They're learning, 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 but they can never get it. Now, as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was. So we see here right now, these are kind of perilous times. These are things that we're putting up with. See, these are things that we're seeing. And so, and we know that they're escalating more and more and more. And, and you know, one of the things that you can sense in the spirit, in the atmosphere around us is more and more hatred. There's more and more hatred. It's something that, and that anger and hatred that you've got to constantly beat down because of the things that you're seeing and the things that you're hearing. The things that you're seeing and the things that you're hearing is, you know, the enemy is trying to promote hatred even more and anger so that man eventually just kills himself. Let's go a little further. In verse 10, he says, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Icum and at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will what? Suffer persecution. Come on, read it with me. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So you know things are going to get worse. There are a lot of imposters. There's a lot of wannabes, but not willoughbies. There's a wannabe, but not willing to pay the price to be. And they're getting worse and worse, having a form of godliness, a religiosity, but truly not walking correctly. Their heart is not right with God. He says, but you must continue... And the things which you have learned. Why? Because if you don't learn, you what? You burn. And been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith. Which is in Christ Jesus. Then it tells us all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every what? Good work. So you see in these perilous times, these are the last days, perilous times, last days. This is all representation of destruction of man. In other words, last days, we know that there's a destruction coming on. In other words, we know that there's an end of things getting ready to happen. Last days. Last means last, doesn't it? It means end. And it's, and it's going to be associated with the wrath of God by the release of demonic forces overcoming individuals 
who have not learned to fight spiritually. Do I need to repeat that? Love to. <laughs> and his last days will be destruction of man, which is we know is the wrath of God. He will release. There'll be more release of demonic forces overcoming individuals not learn to fight spiritually. Think about how many people you know that have no idea about a spiritual fight. Think about how many people you've seen fall, stumble, backslide, go back into the world because they never fought spiritually. Because they don't know how to pull out the sword of the spirit. Because they don't know how to fight. They don't know how to bind and loose. They can't discern what a devil is. And they're so loaded with them, they've never been delivered. Do you understand? Remember, the demonic forces are being released more and more and more also. Go to 1 Timothy 4. Perilous times. I know we've heard these before, but we're going somewhere tonight. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, it says, Now the Spirit expressly, expressly, I'm telling you, expressly, <laughs> Says that in the latter times, here we are again. Some will depart from the faith. Why are they going to depart from the faith? It says here because they're going to, what? Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Why? Because they do not know how to spiritually fight. How are you hearing? They do not know how to spiritually fight. You know, the devil will use anybody. It don't matter. He's not a respecter of person. He'll use anyone to serve him. That's why the Bible tells us that Satan comes as an angel of light. And even his ministers have a form of righteousness. These ministers that have a form of righteousness are those who are believers but are deceived and do not know how to spiritually fight. And the devil uses them. Are you hearing? And they, they get into families. They get into fellowships. They get into schools. And they have a form of godliness, but they lead people into bondage because they do not know how to spiritually fight, nor can they discern anything. These are perilous times. You all right? Let's go. Speaking lies in what? Hypocrisy. Having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving. By those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good. And nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God. And prayers. Giving heed to, the, giving heed to legalism. Of religiosity, not working out their salvation by grace, but working out their salvation by works. They're not working out their salvation by grace. They're working out their salvation by what? By works, which promotes demonic doctrines. Are you hearing me? Why? Because they're not learning the truth. So what they do is they accept Jesus and then they go out and do works thinking that their works is going to maintain their relationship with him. See, now they're working for works. Like you need to do something. There's a difference of working out your salvation, which is walking up right before God and having a relationship with him, than trying to work a salvation by your works. Nobody can work a salvation. None of us has the power or the authority to. It is a gift from God. Amen. It's called grace. But in the grace, it says, here's plan, God's plan of escape from the, his own wrath, from the wrath of God and from the demonic forces. So grace here is God's plan. So you and I can learn to spiritually fight. Doesn't God want you? To be victorious in this realm? Doesn't he want you to be prosperous in this realm? Doesn't he want you to rescue souls? Doesn't he want you to cast out devils? Lay hands on the sick? Doesn't he want you to be an example of his son, Jesus the Christ, who walked on this planet? Yes. Then we must warfare. We must learn to maintain. You're working and fighting to maintain walking in the spirit too. Because the enemy is attacking you in every way he can. Why? Because there are perilous times here. Are you hearing? Remember. <laughs> taking heed to legalism of religiosity. 
not working out their salvation by grace, but working for their salvation by works. There's a difference. That doesn't give us a legal right to go out and sin, because who you serve when you die is where you go. (laughs) Titus 1. Why is that happening? Because they're not learning the truth, are they? See, the Bible says truth sets you free. Titus chapter 1. Let's start at verse somewhere. Start at verse 10. Now, we're talking about perilous times, aren't we? This is about perilous times right now. These are things that we got to put up with. Are you hearing? These are things that we must overcome and not get sucked up in. These are things that are all around us and we can't turn. We can't sway. We can't be deceived right now. Perilous times. And Titus 1 verse 10. For there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not, for the sake of dishonest gain. One of them a prophet of their own. (laughs) I love that. Said Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. Therefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in faith, not giving what? Heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men who turn from the truth. That's called men pleasers. He said to the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every work. Wow. They are idle talkers, deceivers. They profess to know God. It's called pride. And they are disqualified for good works. Why? Because pride will always disqualify you. I don't care what you do. If If it's done in pride, you're disqualified. In fact, the Lord came the first time for sin. He's coming back this time because of pride. Disqualify for good works, but they produce false works. Now listen, they produce false works for salvation of self. Which is not true salvation. Are you hearing me? So they're out there doing works to show others. (laughs) I'm a believer. Yes, can't you see? I'm a believer by my works. So they profess one thing, but within they're doing something else. They're actually trying to convince you that they're a believer. Are you hearing me? Hello? But see, what happens is they're actually producing false work for salvation of self. They're trying to preserve self. But it's not true salvation. Remember, pride protects self. Fear protects pride. Anger protects fear. James 5. Let's go a little bit further. Perilous times. You know, Paul had to put up with it. In one of his epistles, he was talking about how when, when, when Paul and some of the apostles went in this area and there was this woman that was a seer and would get paid for her works. And she kept following the apostles around going, oh, the men of God are here. Yes, they're great. Look at this. And they were following them around. Paul put up with her for a few days. Finally said, that's enough. Come out in the name of Jesus. And she lost her job because he cast out that familiar spirit. <laughs> Are you hearing? <laughs> See, there's the, this is what we're putting up with right now. Believe me, there's times when I just want to tell somebody something. Like, come out, you know. Hallelujah. I won't go any further on that. James 5 and verse 1. Would you read it with me now? Come now, you rich, weep, howl for your m- miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted. Your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded. 
and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasures in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and in luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in the day of slaughter. <laughs> you have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist. You see, judgment of the ungodly owners of wealth in the last days. And what's going to happen in the first three and a half years of tribulation, and even in the area where we're at right now, there's going to be a false peace and a false prosperity where people are relying on their bank accounts and on their wealth instead of on their relationship. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy as long as you know it's the Lord's. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy as long as the wealth is from the Lord. And it's not taken in deceit or lying or hurting anyone. Does anybody understand it's important? Because in this, we are seeing wealthy individuals who are proclaiming to know God by what they sow, but yet they don't know God because of what they say. We'll get that later. Second Peter chapter 2. Perilous times. Second Peter chapter 2. Start at verse 1. But there are also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring them on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth is blasphemed. By covetous, they will exploit you, with deceptive words, for a long time their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example of those who afterward would live ungodly. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment and especially those who walk according to the flesh and the lust of uncleanliness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. And we see he's talking about Noah's time, right? And Lot's time. And Noah's time was an area of where the flood destroyed. And Lot's time was an area where Sodom and Gomorrah, which was destroyed by fire. But it was cities, not the world. So that which was, was complete with the flood. But it was a partial of the fire, which is to come. Are you hearing? See, he's talking about perilous times, just like how Lot was of the righteous among the unrighteous. How Noah was of the righteous among the unrighteous, which was perilous times for them. Are you hearing? See, we are in the days of Noah. That's why these things are coming. Everything we're talking about, if you go back and look at Noah's time, is what we're in right now. Let's go a little further. Go to verse 12. But these, like natural brute beasts, made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand, and will utterly perish in their own corruption, and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. 
They are spots and blemishes, carousing their own deceptions while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and they cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covet practices and are accursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Baruch, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. But he was rebuked for his iniquity, a dumb donkey speaking with the man's voice, restrain the madness of the prophet. <laughs> These are wells without water, clouds carried by tempests, for whom is reserved the blackness and the darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption, for whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome the latter end, is worse than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of the righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But as it happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and so having washed to her wallowing in the mire. You know, it, it, it's amazing in this because, you know, even when we go to places and preach or whether it be in jail or whatever, you know, everybody's always trying to look, people that are not spirit-filled. They're always trying to look to see where you made a mistake in the letter. <laughs> Do you get it? You know, we were in jail um, Monday and was preaching about breaking curses off this, that, and whatever. And, and this one guy came up afterwards, and I was on my way out, and I was in a hurry because I stayed a little bit later. And he asked me something. He says, well, it says that the, uh, um, that the sins of the fathers are, don't come on to the children and this and that. And I wanted to just look at him and tell him, you ain't spirit-filled, are you? Because you don't know the spirit. Because if you did, you'd understand what the Holy Ghost was speaking about when that was written. So he started saying certain things and whatever, and I just said, see ya. <laughs> I told him, you go look it up. <laughs> he wanted to know where this was, that was, and whatever. But, you know, I, it really showed me in that area, of, and, I, and this guy doesn't come to the classes, you know, so he's missed all of the classes of what, what was going on in there. I thought, man, and you could just see the religious all over him to try to disprove. Do you, do you understand? They, they try to disprove so that people won't get set free. So when I got home that day, I bound that deaf and dumb spirit, that religious spirit, so it won't steal from the men that were there already and getting it. Are you hearing? And, and see, that's where we've got to do warfare also, you know, because the devil waits. He waits to go after people. He's there to steal, kill, and destroy. And, and that's just a part of the perilous times because it's getting more and more and more. You know, e even in these times, you've got to be faithful. If you say you're going to do something, you better do it. Because you're either earning the trust of God or losing it. And, and right now, there is no time to play games. There, there's not enough time to play games. We've got to stand strong and fight through these times and not be swayed in any way whatsoever. Listen, and this is one of the things I, I've shared before. I said, man, if you're not learning and if you're not learning how to fight, it's not time for preaching. Hello? I'm talking about in fellowship. It's time to be trained. There must be training going on everywhere. Preaching is for evangelism, to go out and bring them in. Once they come in, they must be trained. It's time for training. Are you hearing? You know, and, and there's, there's, I mean, 
don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with preaching in certain areas, and but there's a time for everything. But right now in fellowships, there should be training. Everything should be training. We shouldn't be coming together on a Tuesday night to hear preaching. Everyone in here is saved, I hope. I don't need to try to convince you to accept Jesus, do I? Now you need to be trained. You need to be equipped. So you can go out and rescue someone, slap the devil out of them, and train them up. (laughs) Go to Jude. Jude 5. Perilous times. Why? Because we are in the days of Noah. That's tonight's teaching, days of Noah. In verse 5, would you read it with me? But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. (laughs) I love this. (laughs) Okay, come on, everybody, let's go, he says. All right, so they all come out. He rescues all of the people out of Egypt who've been in bondage for 400 years. And he does signs, wonders, and miracles, and then they don't believe. So he just says, okay, I'll kill you. (laughs) He said, you either learn or you're going to (laughs) burn. I mean, you know, that's what it says right here, right? He says, and he saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward, destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains. Under darkness for the judgment of the great day, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, we're seeing more and more of this happening now, you know. Because things are getting a little bit more out of control. Where they're allowing same-sex marriage, being approved. And now they're voting. I, I know San Francisco now has it in their ballot to vote for legalizing prostitution. So they're trying to, they figure, well, you know, since we have same-sex marriage, uh, let's not cause any harm. Because uh, they can't think correctly. Uh, let's not cause any harm to any more people or offense any more people. Let's just legalize prostitution so that we can get them off the street. And But they have not set up anything of licensing, checking them out, making sure they're clean. Now you're going to have prostitution, of homosexuality, lesbianism, everything. So that's what they're voting on right now. I saw the woman being... Uh, she was being interviewed on the news. Like if I could have stretched my hand through the TV, they'd see this big hand coming through the and choke her. And world TV, you know. But I, I mean, she, and and the interviewer was asking questions, and this girl kept rolling her eyes, and she couldn't answer the question. She was so stupid. I mean, there was no common sense whatsoever. She was so far out there. It was ridiculous. I mean, she was so loaded with demons. She couldn't answer the questions. The guy kept saying, the interviewer going, well, how are you going to keep things clean? Well, we don't know. (laughs) And and he was getting as frustrated as I was. I'm going, I'm thinking, grab her, grab her, please do it for me. You know? (laughs) Cast that devil out right on TV. I had to turn the station. I couldn't take it any longer. I started sweating bullets, you know. I was like, man. But anyways, I mean, this is where we're at. That's called perilous times. Having to put up with boneheads who do not know the truth. And then you got people who who are supposedly believers going... Well, maybe it's uh maybe it will help. How? 
Well, you know, maybe it will be, maybe it will bring us closer together. Yeah, I'll bring you closer together. <laughs> you all have the same disease, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody okay? What verse are we on? Eight? Let's read it together. Likewise, also these dreamers... Idiots, defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring in against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know. They speak evil of the things they don't understand. Oh, you're a cult. We get, we get that all the time. You're a cult. No, you're demonized. I'm free. But they speak evil of what they do not understand. Why? Because they do not have the spirit. And whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts in these things, they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of gain. They have run greedily in the air of Balaam for profit and perish in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feast, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, I love that, pulled up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame. Wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness. <laughs> for uh, Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints, that's us, to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them all of their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be what? Mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause the visions not having the what? Spirit. Do you see this? They're not being led by the Spirit. There are me, myself, and I individual. Their woe is me one. Their whole concern is about me. And then they speak evil of things they can't understand because they're not willing to learn. There are people that are very easily offended because of what's in them. People that are very easily offended have demons because they're way too alive. And no matter what you say, the devil twists it in their mind and their offense very easily. Very easily. Sometimes you have a sense that you've got to walk around with them with eggshells. Well, let me tell you, gather the shells and throw it at them. <laughs> they are not led by the Spirit. <laughs> Noah and Lot, both righteous men, they were God fearing, right? Think of what they had to put up with. Those are perilous times. These are perilous times we're in. Things are not going to get better, they're going to get worse. It says men will be, be, get worse, there'll be more imposters, idiots will be more idiots. It's not, it's not easy. But this is why we've got to stay dead. God's always going to check your deadness. Hello? You usually get a dead check every, every day at a certain time of the day. You get a dead check. God's going to see if you're dead. Nothing worse than a live Christian. You need to be a dead one. Because if you're dead to yourself, then Christ has got rain. So God's going to allow something to happen to you every single day to check your dead level. If your dev level is too low, you got a devil. 
You understand? Hebrews 10. <laughs> well, where did he come from? Well, you touched and agreed with something. Maybe he was hitchhiking while you were walking by. <laughs> and he said something. You said, yes. In his terminology, he said, give me a ride. But actually, he said something perverse or something of your past. So you agreed. But see, in his language, he said, give me a ride. In your language, it stirred up something. Hello? What allowed him access to you? And then he got a free ride. And then we struggle and so forth and get real sensitive to all kinds of goofy things and get offensive very easily. Are you hearing? And let me tell you, you'll find out what devil's in you by what comes out of your mouth. Hello? If you could record what's coming out of your mouth, that day, you'll know who you're hanging with or you who you hit, picked up hitchhiking. Hebrews 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you suppose will be he thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot Counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Willfully sin and turn back to the world. Just like in the days of Noah. They rejected Noah. Just think how much torment Noah had to go through. Now, I'm talking about not only the perilous times, but the area where Noah was constantly warning. Warning. People were rejecting. Warning. He's an idiot. Look at that guy. He might get in that boat out of my driveway. <laughs> right? Do you understand? People were mocking him for building a boat. They didn't even know what a boat was. Nobody owned one. <laughs> Hadn't rained yet, right? <laughs> and here, here's Noah building, you know, super Titanic, you know. <laughs> like, what are you doing, man? I'm building a boat. What's a boat? Something that floats in the water. Who told you that, man? God. And you better get right. Because there's a flood coming. What's a flood? It's when rain comes down. What's rain? You'll see shortly. <laughs> Take heed. I'm telling you. I'm warning you. It's coming. I'm warning you. Judgment's coming. What you're doing ain't right before God. See, he kept warning them and warning them. Are you hearing? <laughs> Second Peter chapter 3. You know, I, I think it's... Great, because, you know, the Lord probably had to teach Noah all of this stuff. You know, he told him you had to build it 40 cubits by 30 cubits by 50 cubits. And probably Noah's going, man, what's a cubit? <laughs> God, I mean, God had to t train him up to do all of this stuff and how to get it and whatever. I mean, think about that. I mean, you know, the Lord had to speak to Noah. He had to imprint in his mind these blueprints probably while he slept. I mean, it never left him. He kept knowing and knowing and knowing that something was going to come. And he had to keep building. I mean, even his sons kind of struggled with what he was doing. But they finally obeyed. What are you doing, Dan? You know? It wasn't easy at that time. The perilous times, wasn't it? See, people are not going to understand you. They're not going to understand you. But you can't get sucked into the flesh. People are going to speak evil of you. They won't understand that you're being led by the spirit and not by the letter. Are you hearing? In 2 Peter chapter 3, is everybody there? 
Let's start at verse uh, 1. Beloved, I now write to you the second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the works which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts, saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water. By which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So this is where we're standing right now. We're to be not only watchmen and warriors, but we're also to be blowing the horn. And blowing the horn is saying is we need to be warning, warning. You are going to be mocked at your job. You're going to be mocked in all kinds of places. Are you hearing? It doesn't matter. Now, you got to use wisdom. I mean, you just can't keep going, oh, yeah, I'll tell your boss he's an idiot and he doesn't know the Lord. You'll lose your job. You have to use wisdom in this whole ordeal. Because we are in perilous times. There are things you're going to have to put up with so you can stay in position. Go to Matthew 24. Days of Noah. Matthew 24. And verse 34. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So are we increasing more in the days of Noah? Yes. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. And I truly believe that this is more than just male and female they're talking about. Until the day that Noah entered the ark. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in a field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other will be left. Watch therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming in as an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all of his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying, his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of it and will cut him in two and appoint his portion with the what? Hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow. Days of Noah, hypocrites, evil servants, eaters of the tree of the knowledge and not eaters of the tree of life. Go to Genesis 6. Genesis chapter 6. In verse 12, it says, So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So make yourself an ark, right? 
Everybody okay? Everybody see that? So we see these talking about filled with what? Violence. Are you hearing? Filled with what? Violence. Now, one of the things that I also want to share that not only was it filled with violence, but it was filled with greed. Are you hearing? It was filled with lust and perversion. And if you notice, these things are all escalating even more now. Love of money, the Bible says, is the root of all evil. The root of all evil. And if you look at everything on TV and anything you see, I mean, people are really willing to act like idiots to get money. They'll eat worms. I mean, you know, they eat snail. I mean, you know, whatever. They do all kinds of weird stuff. They'll jump off of roofs, you know. They, I, I mean, they've got a, they got shows that people will do anything for money. You know, it's like daring people to get money, thinking money's going to buy them happiness because the ruler of this world is controls individuals by money. So in this, I really believe that at this time of violence that there was greed and perversion and people willing to kill each other to take possessions from someone. Go to uh, Genesis 7 and verse 1. Then the Lord said to Noah, come, come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are a righteous, you are righteous before me in this generation. He shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of the animals that are unclean, a male and his female, also, seven each of the birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive in the face of all the earth. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him to do. Now, Noah was six hundred years old when the flood waters were on the earth. So Noah and his family and so forth, they went into the ark. In verse 11, in the 600th year of Noah's life, can you imagine living 600 years? Whew. Not in this place, man. In the second month, the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the deep, of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were open. And rain was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Now, there's something I want to share with you about this. Because this is kind of representation of the rapture. Noah was the righteous man. The Bible says that the righteous will be rescued from the wrath of God. Are you hearing? So they all get in the ark. Now, uh, 40 is a representation uh, of atonement and judgment. Uh, 40 represents like atonement and judgment. And if you think about this, um, it rained 40 days and 40 nights, didn't it? The Jews were in captivity for 400 years in Egypt, weren't they? You understand? See, so we see the multiplication here. Uh, Moses, he killed a man and then he was in the wilderness 40 years. And then the Lord revealed himself to him. Then, are you hearing? And, and then what did he do when, when the Israelites began to build a calf down there? And Moses came down. He had to go up there and spend 40 more days to make atonement for Israel. So, and then when Jesus came, what did he do? He made atonement, didn't he? He was making atonement by being separated 40 days. See, so atonement in this, in, in, in the representation of four, uh, uh, is atonement, or, or in 40, is atonement and judgment. Now, if you think about this, from the time of Adam to the time of Jesus was what? 4,000. So think about all of these things. Uh, you know, God always works in perfection of uh, sequences and cycles and certain things to that degree. So if you just kind of just take a glimpse at all of this, you'll see, wow, this is pretty intense. So I want you to look at this as, as um, when they went into the ark, it's a representation of rapture. Now, Noah was a witness to violence, perversion but also cosmic signs because the wrath of God is always revealed from the heavenlies. So there were definitely cosmic signs going on. 
And of course, the righteous preacher warned them continually that judgment was coming. But the generation ignored all the warnings and um, they were swept away by the flood, weren't they? This generation that ignores the warnings will be swept away by the flood of tribulation. Forty days judgments or atonement. Again, I share with you that Moses was 40 days. Israel, uh, 400 years in the wilderness. And uh, go to Genesis 8. In verse 1, the God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the water subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. The waters receded continually from the earth at the end of the 150 days, the waters decreased. Then the ark rested on the seven, in the seventh month and the 17th day of the month on the mountains of Arat, which is the area of Turkey. Now, I want you to get this. In this month, which is powerful, I love this. So, the ark rested seven days after the Feast of Atonement and in the middle of the Feast of Tabernacle. Are you hearing that? The ark rested on the mount, sat down on the mount and rested seven days. Are you hearing? After atonement. Seven meaning what? Complete. Complete and perfect. And right in the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is representation of the Lord's return. Let's go a little further. <laughs> And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. And the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. So it came to pass at the end of what? Forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. Forty days meaning what? Atonement or judgment. But here we can see it's making atonement. Then he sent out a what? A raven which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. Now, the raven here represents darkness. When the Lord called the angels of the Lord to come before him, and Satan came before him, he said to Satan, where you been? And he said, I've been going to and fro on the earth. Now watch this. Okay, so it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window and the ark he made, and he sent out a raven, which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. He also sent out from himself a dove. Now, did we not get born in darkness and born again in light? To see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her feet, and she returned into the ark to him. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and drew her into the ark to himself. And he waited yet another what? Seven days, meaning what? Complete. And again, he sent out the dove from the ark. Then the dove came to him in the evening. Behold, a what? Freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth. And Noah knew that the waters had receded from the earth. Now this is very powerful because seven meaning complete, complete, complete. See, it's also a representation in the area of Jacob's trouble. And, and even after the tribulation, the things will be what? Complete. And God will set up his kingdom on earth. I also really believe it's a representation, because he did this three times in representation of complete complete in the trinity of Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But it's also a representation of where we'll be. Because we will be with the Lord, won't we? Well, what? Judgment is on the earth. And then we will return with him. And everything will be made, what? Brand new. Now, and it came to pass in verse 13, in the 601st year in the first month, the first day of the month that the waters were dried up from the earth and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. 
Does everybody get it? Is everybody okay? Okay. So the raven was representation of demonic, of Satan, of darkness going first. Remember, you and I were born in what? Darkness and come to light. And during tribulation, where will we be? It's a representation of the rapture and then returning. So be okay. Now, there's something very powerful here and, and also represents. Now, the Bible tells us here that this was now the first month and the first day because now it's the Jewish new day. It's the beginning of the year for them. And in this, I want you to also look at because he says three times he does. He waited seven times, seven days, which meaning way, truth and life. It also was a representation of Jesus fulfilling the feast of Passover. Are you hearing me? Fulfilling the feast of Passover, feast of unleavened and first fruits. See, we are in the days of Noah right now. This is happening all over right now. Perilous times. Now, in verse 11, it says something very powerful. In 711, I want to go there. It says in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on that day all the foundations of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were open. The great deep was broken up and the windows of heaven were open. Okay, so we see that one of the signs was water, flooding. What's going on right now? Amen. Now, he said he would not kill the earth by flooding. But if you look at some of this, you see all over the judgment of flooding right now. Now, go to Luke 21. Luke 21. In verse 25. 25 and 26. Let's read it together. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity. The sea and the waves, what? Roaring. Hmm, sounds like the days of Noah. Are you hearing? Men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Hallelujah. Now, I just want to share something real quick. The seas and the waves roaring. What? Hurricanes. Tsunamis. Look at Katrina. New Orleans got slammed. Right? Do you know that New Orleans, 15% of the population of New Orleans that practices voodoo in a cult. In fact, when Katrina hit there, it was a celebration that beginning of, about to start, which has started since 1972 each year. The Southern uh, Decadence Gay Celebration. They were expecting over 125,000 of these to show up. It was announced. Well, after it was announced, two days later, Katrina hit and blew their party. I call it demons dressed in flesh. So it stopped their event. Do you understand? So look at what's going on right now. There are fires going on in the West. Tremendous fires. Floods in Central America. Right here. I mean, things are happening all over here in the days of Noah in a tremendous way. Now go to Genesis 9. A couple more and we're done. Just give you an idea where we're at. Yeah, you got to put up with some stuff. Just don't get sucked in, right? Keep warning, no matter what. In Genesis 9 and 13, just want to keep, keep looking at the parallel between Noah's time and our time. Noah's time and our time. What's going on? Genesis 9, 13. Let's start at 12. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be for a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud 
And I'll remember my covenant between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Then the rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. So we see here that there was a covenant made and it was the rainbow, right? Okay, now. I want you to remember we talked about at this period of time, it's almost like Noah got raptured in his family. <laughs> and then it landed, then, then the boat landed, basically, in the time of the Feast of Atonement and Feast of Tabernacles, right? And fulfillment of the return. Because the body of Christ is going to return with the Lord on the Feast of Atonement. That's when we come back. Because he's going to atone all things. And then uh, about seven to ten days later, something like this, he will set up his kingdom and we will be on this earth for 1,000 years. Now go to Revelation 4. So we see here that the rainbow was a covenant. In Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. Would you read it with me? Revelation 4 verse 1 through 3. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up here. And I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately, I was in the spirit and behold, a throne set in heaven and one sat on a throne. And you who sat there was like a jasper. And a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a what? A rainbow around the throne in the appearance like an emerald. I want you to understand when he said come up here. What did he see? He saw those stones and what? A rainbow fulfilling the covenant. Are you understanding this? He saw a rainbow fulfilling what? The covenant. The covenant that he made with man at that period of time see do you see the correlation and the parallel of noah's time which we are in right now remember he said it's going to be the days of noah we are in the days of noah the next thing that's going to happen right now for the body of christ is to be removed from the planet now go to hebrews 11 and we'll close here so don't give up fight in verse one we need to have endurance Make sure your faith level is high. That's why you got to be filled with the Spirit. Now, faith is the substance of things that hope for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered a to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead still speaks. By faith Enoch was what? Taken up. Hello? See, so I want you to begin to see the, about maintaining your faith here, because it talks about giving yourself as a living sacrifice, which is Acceptable to the Lord, right? And, and then it, and then it talks about um, the area to where we got to go through stuff, but we're going to hold faith no matter what happens. We're going to hold on to this faith. And then it says here, and by faith Enoch was what taken up; he was raptured, so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken. He had a testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to to faith. So we see here that we must warn and maintain. Let me tell you, everything's going to come against you. No matter what. But we are in the days of Noah. I'm telling you, your redemption is drawing nearer than you ever knew before. 
It is happening. We must continue to warn. We must continue to stand. There is that parallel right now increasing more, more, and more. And you begin to see it even escalate even more, more, and more. You're going to find more compromise. You're going to find more and more people who are claiming to be believers fall to the side. Because they're not walking in faith. They're walking in flesh. They're relying on what they know according to the worldly ways because they're still eating too much of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and not enough of the tree of life. Are you hearing? Their faith is in themselves and not in Christ. It's in their bank accounts. It's in everything else associated with the world, but not in Christ. We cannot have partial faith. You must be filled with faith no matter what. It is a perilous time and things are going to get even more perilous. You're going to have to fight, fight, and fight. But I'm telling you, it's well worth it. Amen? It's well worth it. We're fighting to constantly deny ourselves. We're fighting to keep fear away. We're fighting so we're not war- trusting in our own strengths and our own talents. We're fighting as we come to the end of ourselves to stay filled with the presence of God. The oil is there. It hovers over us constantly now. Just like in the days when the um, Israelites were in the wilderness where the cloud hovered over by day and the fire by night. It's now hovering over us continuously. See, what we have to do now is access it. Access it. So we can stay filled. Filled with faith. And walk in faith. For the just live by faith and not by sight. Amen? Stand strong. Don't be swayed. Don't be turned. And don't be deceived. Come out from among them in every area. Don't get sucked back into them again. Come out. Fight not to go back. No matter what. No matter what. We are too close. And there's too many things that are going on right now. It is an important, important thing right now to stay strong, stay in fellowship, keep praying in the spirit, stay filled, and kick butt. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for keeping us updated of where we are. Lord, we commit to you all our works, all of our ways, and acknowledge you in everything we do. We ask Holy Spirit, That you continue to lead us, shut the doors that are not of you and open the doors that are of you. Grant his continued revelation and rhema visit us in dreams and visions. And keep us hungry and thirsty for your presence. Not wavering in any way, but filled with faith that we may be pleasing to you in every area. Now, Lord, I bless each and every one here in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.